Welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in to our long-term review of the V4 Santa Cruz Bronson CC. Beside me, we've got our good friend Alex, a very capable rider and destroyer of parts and a pretty dedicated Santa Cruz fan, I would say, right? I mean, you've yeah. owned and ridden quite a few and uh, recently have helped us ride in a lot of the new Santa Cruz weed bike, bikes that we've gotten. Uh, so lead it off, man. What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely, you know, I'm a big fan of Santa Cruz. I think a lot of people are out there. It's just, you know, whether you can get into the CC or the C level. My first carbon bike and my first 27.5, like, dedicated trail bike was the Santa Cruz Bronson, the first generation. Bronson, more of a pedally bike for the trails, for local trails. And, you know, even going, still going to the park, it does probably, you know, 90% of the trails out there at bike parks. And then getting a downhill bike, you know, maybe like okay. something more true dedicated for park, you know, so. so. Yeah, so so right now you own a Nomad and that's pretty much your do-it-all bike. Yeah, I, I Nomad uh, the V4. So okay. I haven't gotten the V5, but I tested that one too and it's awesome. Okay, so a lot of the people who watched our initial kind of bike release or first ride report on this video, we went back and looked at their questions and a lot of folks asked Nomad versus 50, or Nomad versus Bronson, and 5010 versus Bronson. So let's put all three of those bikes together because yeah. you've ridden all three as well yeah. and you've ridden a previous generation. Um, what do you think the highlights are of this and where it might stack in the field, what you might buy, et cetera? Well, it, I, it's the perfect niche between somebody who doesn't want to go full long travel single crown bike and somebody who doesn't want to go too short travel for their local trails. It still wants to kind of dibble dabble with some skid trails, some stuff that's a little steeper, or, you know, things in my mind that, you know, maybe you, you may crash, you may not. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's about having fun out there and, you know, you ain't riding unless you're crashing. So for me, the Nomad, I, I think handles better in bigger situations where there's bigger G outs and, you know, because there's really two different types of bumps. You have your stutter bumps and you have your big G outs, a negative or positive, a rock sticking out of the ground or the rock that was removed from the ground, you know? Right. And I think when you hit those big ones, um, this bike still dances great through switchbacks that are dusty and ruddy, but for me, the Nomad handled that stuff a little better where the 5010 didn't handle that stuff better. But where I noticed mostly with the 5010 where it lacked was the front wheel. So m my impressions on this bike um, were kind of, the, they, they didn't really go unchanged from my first ride report, which was <clears throat> similar to yours, it's right in between the Nomad and that uh, 5010, which makes sense, right? I mean, it, it's pulling in the bigger wheels, a little bit more travel up front, but the playful, nimble, agile yeah. feel of that rear end. Um, and I think that bike got a great review from us last year. We all really enjoyed it, but I definitely feel like that is probably the most, I don't want to say pigeonholed, but it is definitely the most user specific bike. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be the play guy, the jibber, the, the the dude that's inspired by 50 to 10, you know, like that's that's what that bike or the sorry, the 50 to 1 guy. Yeah, right yeah. He's inspired by those dudes. Um, that's going to be the ideal rider for that bike. And it will do other stuff, but at a, I think at a greater disadvantage when you take it outside that ballpark. The yeah. Nomad, <clears throat> like you said, and you own it will smash, you can take it to the park, you can still pedal it. I mean, yep. you do some really steep rugged climbs. We took it on a lot of long trail rides when we tested it last year. Um, but this bike is lighter, it's more playful. Um, the 27.5 rear end still kind of gives that 50 to one, or sorry, that, I get those two confused. I don't wanna, do they do that on purpose? <laughs> the shorter <laughs> rear end still gives that kind of playful 50-10 feel. Um, but the traction, the bump compliance, um, yeah. you know, just that, that hard charging mentality is n turned up a little bit on this bike. I've kind of been one of those diehard 26 kids for so long held out until the Bronson came out with the 27.5, which was for me, huge difference when I finally rode one. And then at 29 are just, for me, they're amazing. So I ride a lot of the bikes that we have here, it comes in for tests, but just the dance, you know, the, the playfulness of that rear 27.5 dancing it, putting it wherever you want to do, all come into corners and just completely cut things out and dice across the, you know, a berm that everyone hits. And it, it's just nice to be able to do that. But what I noticed drastically different from my Nomad is you know, most of the trails, this bike was faster. You know, it tracked more, it held more speed. It was more, 
yeah, I don't need 170 mil travel for my local trails. You know, the 29er, I think for most riders, you're gonna be fine for people who grew up in a BMX background. I think that's where the mullet stands out. Then that's where people who like to hit slope, bar spins, you know, do 360s on their, you know, 50, 10, you know, it's just, I think that's a, for me overall, the, the Bronson's an amazing bike and it makes me think that I don't need a Nomad and maybe just go something like this, set it up the way I want it and then get a downhill bike so I'm not beating up my nice trail bike all the time down the roads. And I think that's the conclusion I came to. At first I was like, there's no way I can replace my Nomad, but it got me thinking maybe I, I finally do need two bikes because this bike does better in a lot of situations than my Nomad. Yeah, and maybe, day -to -day stuff. yeah, and then the downhill will do even better for me and what I need to do to just, bike park, yeah. exactly, yeah, Absolutely. so. This bike is available in five frame sizes, uh, extra small through extra large, size specific chain stays, which is a really cool feature. Um, the leverage curve is similar to that found on the high tower. Um, and, and I thought that was pretty interesting. And I think they did a really good job with the suspension tune on this, obviously, Rider weight and uh, riding style and terrain are gonna alter your impressions and whether or not you need more or less volume reducers. Um, but for our riding, I think, right? I mean, you were happy, yeah. you weigh what, 200 pounds? Yeah, 200 pounds. And then it's like, you know, with, with the air shock, it was great. I'm typically a coil rider, you know, and like to adjust my settings, but man, the bike just felt great overall. Okay, yeah, you know? and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. 170 and I was also equally happy, uh, obviously with a little less air and different compression settings. Um, <clears throat> high versus low VPP. Now that was a question that we saw a bit, uh, and sort of like to back way up. I've, well, I'd say for like the last three years, I've changed my opinion. I used to be pretty anti VPP for a long time. And at that point in my life, right, everything was high VPP, yeah. uh, it, from intense and Santa Cruz. And I was just not a fan. I could not get along with it. Um, you know, the, the trails I grew up on down in Southern California, very embedded, sharp rock, sandstone shelves, and the feedback, the deceleration, um, <clears throat> hand and foot fatigue, very real. Um, and it was, it was uncomfortable to pedal just to be seated in that um, really stiff rear end. And uh, Santa Cruz is definitely making me eat my words. Like I, I now like VPP <laughs> bikes. These things ride very well. So if the last Bronson or Santa Cruz that you rode was one of the high VPP designs, uh, rest assured it will be a very notable and big improvement over that setup. So, um, all right, other talking points here, Santa Cruz, it is a 150, 160 bike, certainly not gonna be the lightest in the category. However, it will definitely be one of the most durable stiff, robust, and uh, comes with a lifetime warranty. Also Santa Cruz's standard uh, features that they would include on all bikes. So uh, lifetime bearing replacement, nice down tube uh, protection, chainstay guard. Bike was quiet, right? Yeah, overall, I mean, how Santa Cruz protects their bikes, I think is just- Really good. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Really. Oh, new handlebars too. I thought, <coughs> um, oh, you know, I, like I'm not bars. a big fan of Santa Cruz's typical handlebars, I always like, a little bit more rise, maybe a little less sweep, but these felt great actually. You're right. You know, I, for I me, I actually really do like these yeah. bars, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty picky about handlebars. So yeah, the the Bergtech stem and, and new bar was definitely a highlight. I think mm -hmm. can run coil or air, which is neat. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a thing I think um, not all companies disclose. It's something you know you don't have the option to run whatever shock you want. You don't have right. like that freedom. That I want to put a coil on. I'm going to put an air. You know, it's the thing about Santa Cruz. I think they run it for for that. Um, all right, so uh, we tested a size large. Most of our riders are 5'11 to 6'2. Um, Alex, obviously, he's got long arm and torso, so he would have liked an XL, but for us, uh, the 475 or 472 millimeter reach, depending on, um, you know, high or low, pretty spot on, we liked it. Um, the, the extra large goes up to 500 or 497, which probably is short for, in, for a lot of people's opinion for an extra large. Uh, stack height, 635 or 637, uh, 64 and a half degree head tube angle, plenty yeah. slack for the gnarly stuff, right? Yeah. But yeah. not so slack to where the bike feels asleep or you're pushing the front end when you're pedaling or on flatter trails. Like we intentionally went out on a lot of flatter stuff here in Bend and still had a blast on this bike. Yeah, and what I noticed too, you know, with the 
Um, what's it? 77 point. What's the seat tube angle on this? Seat tube is 77.6. Yeah, 77.6. Eight. I mean, with a lot of bikes, I think they're, you know, Santa Cruz is always known for not really having to lock a shock out to go pedal up a hill. And right. now you even have that C2 bangle that's, I, for me, what I noticed is it, it allowed you to kind of put that rear wheel a little bit more placement than what we previously had. I don't yeah. know if it's the Q factor, what's going on, but it felt great just climbing and wrapping around switchbacks. It was overall handled everything great. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the, the 438 chain stays also probably helped a bit in that. And, uh, just kind of give it an I, I think what we said and kind of came away with was performance meets play and and that's mm -hmm. kind of like my big i guess summary on this bike right like if you want a high performance fast bike it can be that if you want to play around and pop and jump and snap and slap it it will do that too i kind of like to kind of guess sometimes what's going to come out maybe and this tube is looking a little chunky and it'd be an I, for me, I don't know what the hell they have in mind, but it'd be awesome to see kind of a little lighter e-bike than what Santa Cruz has out right now with shorter range and something you can kind of do more different types of trails, not have that heavier e-bike, which they're a light and amazing. I mean, they're the funnest so, thing to so ride. So you're saying but. you think there might be an e-bike light coming? Yeah, the a SL? light. Yeah, something like <laughs> a Bronson mullet lighter version of what they have out now. So who knows? But that's my kind of guess, and it'll be excited to see. It's always it's always cool to see what these companies we have. We cannot out confirm or deny that, and have no knowledge of any workings inside the Santa Cruz warehouse. But that's yeah. an interesting uh, observation you have. Yeah, Did just you with buy what? One? Yeah, I would. I, that would be like my you guys buy e bike one? of choice. Yeah, a Bronson light. Yeah. Or a yeah, Bronson E plus. <laughs> hey, you make it, I'll buy it. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that is it, folks. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed us bringing along Alex as a Santa Cruz fan and rider, owner of many bikes in their lineup. So um, it was really awesome for us to have his input just to be able to compare it over the different models of bikes he's owned over the years. And for us to compare it to obviously the hundreds of bikes that we've ridden over the last decade. Um, so it was really cool to see where this thing stacks up. Very solid bike. Um, like I would say, I give this bike two thumbs up if it's if it's in the wheelhouse of what you're looking for, which is a bike that blends some performance, a bike that blends playfulness. Um, it'll let you go up to the, the bike park once in a while and shred some laps, but you can still go pedal some mellower trails. This thing is well worth a look. So props to Santa Cruz for nailing this thing. A uh, really solid bike. And I think, yeah, it's it's almost made it easier for 5010 guys to, to say, I'm a 5010 guy, uh, nomad guys to say, I'm a nomad guy. And, and for everyone who kind of wasn't sure to be like, the Bronson is the bike that will sort of let me do the things that those bikes started to compromise on the best, right? And everything in that middle world is where the Bronson's gonna shred. And uh, yeah, I think, on flatter trails like it's way more fast it's way faster way more fun than a nomad's gonna yep. be but it's also gonna roll faster and be more efficient than a 5010 is yeah and, and riding more 29ers and having that the business with the traction up front and the party in the back just the cut in corners and letting that back wheel dance wherever you want that's the noticeable thing that i notice with this bike over everything is just very playful you know and yeah. i give it a thumbs up i'd love to have one awesome all right. Well, there it is, folks. Santa Cruz Bronson CC. Thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, I'm going to ask a favor from you. Doesn't cost anything. Just hit the subscribe button. We have look at our analytics lately. We're trying to have those smart guys tell us what to do. And guess what? 80% of you aren't subscribing to the channel. We're out here sweating. It's 100 degrees right now. Look at us sweating. Just hit the subscribe button. That's all. Not a big deal. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.